Businesses are changing due to the COVID-19 situation. What are the strategies and mind games they use to get people to keep buying and buying big? Has it changed from before COVID-19 or is it basically the same? We wanted to know the subconscious tactics that are used by businesses on their potential customers. We did some deep research and came up with a video that we are sure you are going to enjoy. Some of the most popular businesses in the world play these mind games with consumers. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. Some businesses will do anything to sell their stuff, and there are a few businesses who do not apply tricks to sell stuff to you or to get you to come back for more. Basically, you are being manipulated. It is like brainwashing. They try to use association to something else to get you to buy their stuff. These techniques may include repetition. One primary method business owners use to manipulate consumers is to repeat a word, phrase, image, idea, or sound in their advertising so often that the consumer automatically associates it with the company, product to service, and vice versa. For example, you might repeat the same company slogan across all forms of advertising you use including radio and TV spots to overwhelm the public with the same message and create previously non-existent associations. Sounds Advertisers also use music, songs, and sounds to build associations. They use the same song across radio, TV, and online video advertising or pick a song with lyrics that match the company or product. Additionally, certain sounds have meanings that we already associate with them and can cause a consumer to react on impulse. For example, the sound of a steak grilling in a TV restaurant ad might cause a viewer to feel hungry and, in addition to the visual elements of seeing a steak cooking, prompt him to eat at the restaurant advertised. Colors Color association is another advertising brainwashing technique. Although businesses have specific colors associated with their brand, the manipulation often goes a step further. For example, an online ad might show a red appliance with features the advertiser wants the consumer to remember, colored red, and described with red text. The final message might also be red. The red color is a dominant color and says to the consumer, stop, look at me. It also serves as a mnemonic device. Its attractiveness combines with repetition makes it more likely that a consumer will remember the product associated with it or think of the product when he sees red elsewhere. Emotions. Advertisements also play on emotions. For example, a car carrier company's TV spot might show a giggling baby in the company's latest carrier. A parent watching the commercial with a baby, who often cries during long drives, might subconsciously connect the brand or type of carrier with making his baby happier. An insurance company might create a commercial that shows a worst case scenario and then play on viewer fear by showing two outcomes. A bad outcome for the person who doesn't have the company's coverage and a wonderful outcome for the person who does. Inserts. Businesses also manipulate consumers through insertion of products into popular entertainment, such as TV shows, films, theater productions, and video games. Product placement is a form of stealth exposure and endorsement advertising in which consumers often don't recognize they're seeing a paid advertisement or that it's manipulating their buying habits. For example, a TV viewer who watches a character consuming a specific soft drink might not even think about the product during viewing. The brief exposure, though, to the product and casual endorsement by his favorite TV star or show might build enough familiarity that when he's thirsty or sees the drink on a store shelf, he remembers it and decides to try it. Here are some specific examples of companies influencing you. HuffPost highlighted the following. Heineken and Amazon have subliminal smiley faces in their logos so you feel happier about their brands. You may not notice it, but the three E's in Heineken's are designed to look like they are smiling. John Clark, the director of global external communication for the company, Company, told the Huffington Post in an email, the happy faces give a friendlier appearance, he said. Similarly, the yellow arrow linking to the A to Z in Amazon was created by design agency Turner Duckworth to look like a smiling face so that the e-commerce giants will benefit from feeling a little more human, according to the agency's website. Clark referenced an explanation about the E's in the Heineken's logo that Freddie Heineken, the grandson of the company's founder who would later become the chairman and CEO, gave in 1958 when the beer design was changed. If we make them smile, we look so much friendlier. Cereals and other brands use human-like mascots to make you feel like you know the product. What do an expressive tiger or a spirited leprechaun have to do with your breakfast? Absolutely nothing. But research has found that we form emotional attachments when brands are anthropomorphized with characters. You're not buying cereal or toilet paper, tires, insurance, etc. You're buying a friend. They help define the brand and often reinforce key aspects of products and help give the brand a 
a personality. Mike Simonis, manager of brand media relations at General Mills, which makes Lucky Charms, said when asked about the strategy behind the use of mascots. The same strategy applies to Ronald McDonald of McDonald's. Not only is he a relatable character, but he makes it all look like fun and good for you. Characters on cereal boxes gaze downwards to make eye contact with children. According to a recent study by Cornell University's Food and Brand Lab, two-thirds of the characters on the boxes for popular children's cereal brands look downwards. The characters are effectively making eye contact with small children in the aisles of supermarkets to amplify loyalty to the brand, according to the researchers. The team asked research participants to look at two boxes of tricks, one with the rabbit looking down and one with it looking straight out. They found that so-called brand trust rose by 16% and feeling of connection to the brand increased by 28% when people were looking at the version where the rabbit made eye contact. Restaurants like IHOP redesigned its menu to make you buy more. IHOP recently realized that it could do better when it came to its menus, which were confusing and crowded. The chain redesigned its menu to make it clearer, using mouth-watering pictures, boxes, and color-coded categories. The idea was to create a menu that's easier for customers to digest, which can get people to order more food, according to a recent Bloomberg video. Apparently, the strategy is working. The dining chain has seen a boost in sales since June of 2013. This strategy works with all menus. Clients are much more inclined to buy a dish with a picture than one without a picture. Bloomingdale's and other stores use specific smells to inspire you to spend. Ever notice that malls smell like cinnamon sticks right around the holidays? Turns out that a pleasant smell can help you get to spend more and come back to spend again. Bloomingdale's intentionally has a smell of coconut in the swimmer section, time reported in 2013, and stores like Hugo Boss turn to professional companies to provide signature scents for their brands. Supermarkets put fruits and vegetables up front to entice you into buying junk food later. It's no coincidence that you begin your shopping experience in the produce section of virtually every supermarket. It's designed that way so you enter the store feeling good about your healthy purchases and don't feel as bad buying all those cookies, chips, and bottles of soda later. JCPenney and many other stores jacked up prices so that it seemed like customers were getting a big sale discount. Last year, Reuters confirmed that JCPenney was using a strategy called markup to mark down to lure shoppers and boost sales. And yes, the tactics was exactly what it sounds like. The chain falsely inflated the prices of items and then lowered them through sales and discounts to make those bargains look just a little bit better. You might notice this technique being used by many other stores and businesses as well. Apple waits to send your receipts from iTunes downloads so that you don't feel bad about your impulse purchase of that new Billie Eilish track. Ever immediately regret an impulse buy you make online? Apple reduces that guilt by simply delaying sending you receipts for an iTunes or App Store purchase by a couple hours or days, according to Wired. Devious. Bars and restaurants would include the dollar sign so you'll forget your spending. Research from Cornell's School of Hotel Administration found that people dining out spend more money when the price is not accompanied by a dollar sign in front of it. Stores will let you touch things before you buy. A 2010 study by economists at California Institute of Technology found that shoppers will pay up to 50% more for goods if they can touch them ahead of time. So while online shopping may be more convenient, you'll fork over more money for something if you have direct contact with it in a traditional store. Stores will play slow music to get you to linger inside and form emotional attachments with brands. One Asian mall saw an uptick in purchases by pregnant women after it started playing soothing music from the era when these women were born. Marketing expert Martin Lindstrom wrote in his book Brainwashed, tricks companies use to manipulate our minds and persuade us to buy. And according to Lindstrom, the women said the mall's music continued to have a calming effect on their children even after they were born. Another study in Scotland found that diners at a restaurant spent more money when slow music was playing as opposed to fast music. This might be why Starbucks plays jazz and grocery stores play that slow elevator music. On the other hand, up-tempo songs encourage fast shopping and impulse buys. Meanwhile, playing fast, up-tempo music will make people go through stores quickly and make impulse buys, according to one study published in the European Journal of Scientific Research. Next time you are in a store, ask yourself, what are you doing there? Also ask if what you are about to buy is really necessary. Feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you back here again soon. Until then, take care.